UFC 244 was a phenomenal card. Doubtless, UFC 245 will be as well, assuming Usman and Covington don't kill each other before then. The problem is, the UFC wants me to pay $120 for the privilege of seeing these two cards, and about a dozen others in any given year. I'm balling on a budget here, if balling means eating Costco rotisserie chicken over my sink on a daily basis, and I can't afford the money UFC is asking for. But of course, the UFC doesn't care about me, nor should they. So is there any hope that one glorious day, it might get cheaper to watch every UFC event? Let's find out. You know, I've never actually figured out how much it would cost to buy every UFC pay-per-view. So let's see, 12 pay-per-views in a year times $60 a year pay-per-view. My ass! Yeah, $720 is a bit more than I'm willing to spend, but it doesn't have to be this way. Subscription services have steadily begun to take over the old-style pay-per-view model, and they seem to be gaining some real traction. WWE implemented the WWE Network in 2014 and added every single WWE pay-per-view to the service. Some numbers put the network as drawing 90% of the audience of any given pay-per-view. Then you have DAZN, a newer and more ambitious network started in 2016. DAZN paid over $300 million to secure exclusive rights to Canelo Alvarez and have since acquired the rights to massive events like Chris Cyborg's Bellator debut and KSI Logan Paul 2. DAZN actually has grander ambitions on becoming the quote, Netflix of sports, and according to Forbes, DAZN has around 4 million subscribers already, blowing some of its contemporaries out of the water. DAZN doesn't release pay-per-view buy numbers, so we have to make some assumptions here, but suffice it to say, any company that can pay nearly $400 million for a single athlete and then shell out the money needed to buy cards as big as DAZN has, something's working. Which leads us to the issue of the UFC and why they haven't made the jump to a subscription service, at least one that covers all of its pay-per-views. It's pretty clear the UFC is not bringing in audiences like they used to, with just three of their 10 pay-per-views so far in 2019 doing over 35,000 buys. In fact, of the UFC's top 25 pay-per-views according to Tapology, only three of them happened after 2016. Is it that the UFC has gotten any less popular? It doesn't seem like it. Social media followers and attendance have both steadily risen over the years. In fact, according to MMA payouts, average resale ticket prices have remained pretty constant since UFC 227, with spikes for extremely popular events, namely UFC 229, where Conor McGregor fought Khabib Nurmagomedov. But that's actually the point here. The UFC goes as its stars go, with big stars drawing massive cards and big pay-per-view buys. But, so that's it, right? Just put big stars on pay-per-views and charge the 60 bucks for us all to buy? The problem is, this isn't a video game. Fans are unpredictable, and there's no one formula to creating a star. What Conor McGregor did to capture the attention of the entire world, many have tried to duplicate and just as many have failed. I'll probably get blowback from the MMA faithful on Twitter calling me a filthy casual, but we move regardless. And when you take fighter pay, health, and venue and television logistics into account, it's impossible to put on 12 MMA pay-per-views a year with massive star power to draw every one of them. For every UFC 229, there's a UFC 224. So why doesn't the UFC just throw all of its pay-per-views on UFC Fight Pass, which currently has 450,000 subscribers, and call it a day? Well, making money on streaming services is a tricky game. Finding the right value proposition is hard. You can't bet on people paying $700 a year for Fight Pass. Not to mention the initial startup capital it takes to rent or acquire full production units to show the events, and the fact they'd be losing revenue from ESPN Plus, which currently hosts all UFC events. Plus, what's to stop people from paying the, say, $20 a month for a single fight they want to see, and then canceling the subscription, thereby saving $40 to $60? Full disclosure, I've actually done that with some boxing cards on networks I'm not particularly interested in. There's certainly value in that model, though. Anyone who pays the money to get a single month may like it and keep the subscription going, something I absolutely did when it came to DAZN. Maybe the one month cost is small enough that people who would have pirated a stream would just pay the reduced cost to watch it now. 
And with 12 pay-per-views a year, if the UFC were to add a yearly subscription, enough people would realize it's more cost-efficient to do that if they were to watch X number of pay-per-views and they just buy that. But so far, all I've described is a model that's currently in use, and there's no way to prove it would work better for the UFC. All we can say for sure is it's worked so far with DAZN, as its current estimated subscribers dwarf that of Fight Pass and 2019's total pay-per-view buyers. But it's apples to oranges. DAZN has way more sports than just boxing, with the aforementioned Bellator deal as well as the Pat McAfee show and tons of soccer all over the world. Those numbers also don't account for the number of people watching the UFC cards at places like Buffalo Wild Wings, where the UFC makes millions in fees paid by restaurants to show their events. I actually want to talk about a new model, one that, to my knowledge, has never really been attempted before, but that might draw in a larger mainstream audience while maintaining the revenue generated from pay-per-view buys. I want to suggest a hybrid model, where the UFC shows its pay-per-views, bolsters its subscriptions to Fight Pass, and generates boatloads of new fans who were previously stopped by a high monetary barrier to entry into the UFC. So here's the thing, here's what they can do. They can keep their fight nights on ESPN Plus or they can move them to the new UFC Fight Pass, whichever they like. For seven or eight cards that would have been pay-per-views in the current model, make them Fight Pass exclusive and then raise the price of Fight Pass. There's currently 10 bucks a month Raise it to something that's a little bit more competitive with DAZN, which is 20 bucks a month, $100 for the year. So what that does is it actually allows people to watch cards that now would be considered big pay-per-view cards, so you can still hype them the same, number them, all that kind of stuff, but it's much easier to watch them in terms of your financial barrier to entry. Then you make four or five pay-per-views a year at that $60 price point, and you save the biggest fights for those, space them evenly over the year. So the biggest stars are on these pay-per-views that I now feel like I wanna buy. If Khabib is fighting, if Tony Ferguson and Max Holloway is a match that's happening, this BMF title match between Nate Diaz and Jorge Masvidal, these are the kind of things I would pay $60 to see if they only happen four or five times a year. You really get that novelty of these true pay-per-view cards. And so I don't mind paying the money for that four or five times. What you're left with is a low barrier to entry for new fans into the UFC. And you get fans like me that are much more willing to shell out $100 a year for Fight Pass and then an extra 200 or so dollars for the pay-per-views. Or maybe go to Buffalo Wild Wings for one or two of them. The thing is, is that why would the UFC do this? Things seem to be working okay right now in that the UFC hasn't collapsed and people are making a lot of money. If you actually look at the pay structure for fighters, it's not great. It's not, uh, there's been so many complaints over it. And so from the UFC's perspective, maybe they are leaving money on the table. And I believe the money that they're leaving is money from fans that would watch UFC events, but are currently turned off by how much it costs to truly keep up with the UFC. If you want to know all of the names, not just the star names, but the big names that are fighting on the first or second fight of the undercard on a pay-per-view, you'd have to you'd have to pay sixty dollars every pay-per-view in order to watch that. I just think that it's a bit antiquated when the actual value that we as consumers see from fight cards like this, it's completely changed because of the, all of these subscription services. So where we were once willing to pay $60 every pay-per-view for something like the UFC. I don't think we're willing to do that anymore because the game has changed so much. But the UFC can get ahead of it by implementing this new hybrid model, which no one's ever done before. And so it makes your pay-per-views feel really novel. It makes them feel new and must see. And that's what people are willing to pay for. Not, not just excellence when it comes to the fighting. It's that must-see feeling. There's a reason why Conor McGregor versus Floyd Mayweather did massive numbers. Floyd Mayweather versus Manny Pacquiao did massive numbers. The biggest pay-per-view in UFC history was Conor against Khabib, like I said. There's a reason those are the biggest ones. Obviously, the quality is there, but you're telling me that if some random UFC fighter had just fought some random boxer, a bunch of people would have bought that? Of course not. 
these are stars and it was must see television so of course people are going to shell out the money for that the ufc can capitalize on that while drawing in new fans to their service it my all i'm saying is i believe the ufc is leaving money on the table and by innovating we're talking about the company that in that brought mixed martial arts to the forefront of consciousness it was a decision that was so controversial that many states banned it when they first started so you're talking about a company that's not afraid to take risks the entire company was started on a risk and this now seems like the time to take a risk exactly like this because the the antiquated pay-per-view model is failing and if the ufc wants to keep itself on top and continue to move forward they will have to take some risks